talk to us a little bit about what's going on with you at the moment? Because obviously we, we see you playing football week in, week, week out. We see your vlogging career as well. How much of a, an escape is that from football? How much are you enjoying it? Um, honestly, it's incredible. I absolutely buzz off it. This um, It's something I'm for sure, for sure, I will want to get into after football. Um, you know, there's there's so many more opportunities. And I've got to say the YouTube world as well, because obviously the predominantly I'm doing it on YouTube. Um it's such a nice world. Like social media wise, it is such a nice world compared to some of the other outlets. Um, you know, I'm not a great reader of like comments or things like that, but they are so nice on YouTube. Honestly, everybody's so positive, so upbeat. And they, like people genuinely, genuinely just appreciate good content and stuff to sort of tick time away. Cause I know obviously at the minute it's, it's a busy, like it's, there's not so much st- stuff going on. People need to fill their days with stuff to watch and, and people just really are appreciating it. It's nice to be able to do it as well. All right. So my question to you is what made you like, I hit social media eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. Now I started to hit social media. What made you jump on it? What made you jump on social media? Uh, the YouTube with with the cycling GK, it was it was lockdown. It was the very first lockdown. Um, my kids, obviously, we they, they were, we were starting to do homeschooling and stuff, but a lot of the time they were just sort of twiddling their thumbs. We were out in the garden doing a lot of stuff, um, and when we weren't doing that, they were on YouTube watching videos of kids messing about in their gardens and stuff. And I, I floated the idea to them then about should we just start doing something like with you kids at home, we're messing about, this is what we do. Like it, it might inspire other kids to go out and do other stuff, get active, all that kind of stuff. And then, then obviously football started again, it just kind of disappeared. And then um, once, once the season restarted, I kind of, I really wanted to do something because there was nobody on, on YouTube, especially doing any kind of football vlogging. You know what I mean? Nobody would go behind the scenes and show you this and that. And people genuinely want to see that at this moment in time, you know, the matches, the matches were what people were looking forward to because obviously they had no football on telly and then all of a sudden matches about, and they loved watching football. But then once players disappeared down the tunnel, that was it. It was game over again. Do you know what I mean? There was nothing else for them to see. Um, the story had finished almost. So I thought, how about if I can show what happens before we get on that pitch, a little bit of it during it, and then also afterwards as well. You know, I think people would really be interested in, and intrigued by that and, and really want to see it. And the reception I've had to it, honestly, mate, is absolutely massive. By the way, Bear, you are like, you're like the third or fourth most watched video on my, on the Cycling GK. As soon, <laughs> honestly, as soon as you put the beast out in, of four. Uh, uh, out of, I've got like, what, 40, uh, there's 40 odd videos. I think he's the fourth most <laughs> watched I'm uh, sorry, I just got we got said Laura. Nice, no, I like it. <laughs> as soon as you put his name in the title, <laughs> people love it. Honestly, they want to see it. They want to see what he's up to and stuff. They, they, they're, they're, he's a massive draw, Bayo. So I love it, mate. <laughs> no, look. When I knew I made it, so after the game, when I knew I made it, it was a little pride thing for me as well. I was like, oh, brother, I made it on his channel because I started. Look, I started following you, and I saw the the whole cycling GK, and it's funny because. Like Ben got at me, I did one of his cycles on a Watt bike. Let me just tell you this, it killed me, done. It finished me. And he sent me a message like, well done. I was like, well done. I was like, your session killed me. I kid you not. (laughs) So let me ask a question because I'm going to ease my voice because my voice is a bit messed up, people. So have you had any backlash? So you know people are always quick to say, oh, listen, you should just concentrate on football. Uh, You know, people are very quick like that, which... Anyway, I, I don't even jump on that negativity. Have you had any backlash in regards to you merging both worlds? Yeah, I I'm, I'm completely agree with you. By the, I think as you get older, you learn to just sort of... You, you've got a thicker skin, haven't you? You learn to just go, yeah, yeah whatever, whatever. Because... Yeah. Like you'll never, you'll never please everybody. Honestly, you'll never, ever, ever please everybody. So I, I, I've started to see that if we win a game, it's it's all good. Like, oh, I can't wait to watch the video. Can't wait to watch it. Yeah. But if I have a bad game or we lose, it's it's detracting from my day job. And like I say, you, you can never, ever please everybody. So you've got to have a thick skin and you've got to just kind of, it is what it is, you know, the... Uh, it's in it is a, it's a very interesting question a super interesting question but I, i'll always continue being the same and that which is why people like you bear the same sort of thing you can see that you just don't care you don't care about 
other people's opinions. You just do you. And that's, for me, that's the best way to be. You, you only know how to be you. So just keep being you. And as long as you know you're a good person, you've smashed it, you've cracked it. So let them worry about all the little bits and bobs and, and you just keep being yourself. That, that's the main thing. I love that, Ben. I love that. It's nice, isn't it? Because the thing is as well, like what I get frustrated with is is that people don't believe that footballers have the capacity or the time to do anything other than train, go home, come back, train, play football. But you have a lot of time. And also tell us, talk us through how much attention it takes just to go, right, here's a camera and pop in it there and that's that'll be there for the game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more work goes into it than that. Um, obviously, like my most of my vlogs will start the day before. So it will start on the Friday sort of morning, usually for me, where I'll go out on the bike ride. I'll do a nice bike session or something. Because I'm a goalie. I ain't got to be running about. I can do pretty much whatever, whatever I want on a Friday and still not worry about my legs being tired on a Saturday. So it will start with me. It's like a, it's, it literally is like a countdown chronologically through the day on the Friday, then waking up on the Saturday morning. I'll talk you through what we'll have pre-match meal um we've just had a team meeting we're going to get on the coach now this is the bus driver basler what a man all that kind of stuff and it just shows and it introduces a few little characters as well along the way and there's so many people that that have been in the videos and I, and I keep putting them in the videos so people love them they love to see it's like a, it's like they're watching a soap or something and they want to just keep seeing these little characters and the interactions and i think people at first were genuinely shocked but and surprised that footballers actually have relationships with like masseurs and physios and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I think they reckon, I reckon they think we just sort of get on the bed and go, just rub me, rub me. And that's it. And then you don't talk to them, but it's not like you, there's so many people around the training ground, kit men, those kind of guys that, you have so many relationships I and mean, you talk with all the time. You probably talk with them just as much as you'll talk with the other players. Um, and people are so intrigued by seeing all those kind of little interactions and how it works. Did you have to um, speak to the boss at all? Because obviously your manager has changed in, in, the, in the time that you've been doing it. It's changed this. about three Did times, you Laura. Did <laughs> 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 you have to clear it? I'm trying to, be, I'm trying to be respectful. but Did you have to clear it with every manager that comes in to say, by the way, this is what I do and, like, you know, have that conversation? No, stop bothering, honestly. Uh, no, at first, <laughs> at first, it was, I just kind of, um, I just kind of did it and... I, I knew, I knew at some point there was there would be some sort of legal wrangle or contractual wrangle that would get in the way that somebody somewhere where would spot this. And the, the only thing that really came from it was um, somebody noticed that in the EFL laws, they, there's somebody you're not allowed to broadcast some match footage without a, a contract from the EFL. Um, and I've got to say, honestly, fair play to the EFL, fair play to Sky. Um, they have been so good, honestly. They were so accommodating. They saw the reaction to it. And they saw that people really wanted to see this sort of content. And they re they were the guys that reached out to me and said, like, listen, let's get something agreed. Let's get something signed on paper so we all know where we stand and you can carry on doing it. Um, so fair play to them. But as well, even the club, you know, the club have been great with it because um, there's so many other people. I think they see the response to it as well. And there's so many other people that are like, I genuinely I'm looking out for the Watford result on Saturday just so I can get a gauge of what the video is going to look like in a few days time kind of thing um and it does it obviously I'm, I'm very clever at uh, knowing I know football you know I've been in it long enough to know what I can and what I can't put on so I'll never make I'll never put anything that's going to be um incriminating or dodgy or make somebody look bad you know I'm, I know what I know what I can and can't put on and fair play like my editor as well my editor's brilliant he knows exactly what can and can't be put out there so um it is a very safe sort of video to watch there's no swear there's you know we'll blur them out all that kind of stuff as well 